What's up and welcome to a new video. Today I will show you my latest Webflow clonable, which is probably the last countdown timer you'll ever need. And if you watch towards the end, I'll even show you how you can add some confetti when the timer reaches zero. So let's jump into it. Inside of Webflow, when you clone the project, this is what you'll see. And in the middle, we have the countdown timer component. Clicking on it will reveal the component properties on the right side. This is where you can set when the timer reaches zero. So we have properties for year, month, and day. And we have a property for the time, which is a 24 hour format. So this will define when the timer reaches zero. So in addition to set the ending time and date, we have another property where you can set the time zone mode, where we have two options, fixed or local. If you choose the local time zone mode, you write local in the field. And then the timer will reach zero when the time that you set has passed in the visitor's individual time zone. So that would be great for counting down to a specific day. The other option is the fixed time zone mode. And that means that the timer will reach zero at the same time for every single person, regardless of their time zone. So that would be great for something like a live stream or a campaign that is going to happen at a specific point in time, which is the same for everyone. If you use the fixed time zone mode, you can also have the option to define what is the time zone that you're actually setting the ending day and time in. So you can write UTC and base it off of that, or you can put another time zone by using the offset hours. So let's say I wanted this timer to reach zero in about an hour. So today is April 4, 13th. And I'm just gonna use the local time zone mode here. Publish. Okay, so now we can see the timer is just about an hour off from hitting zero. You can even add multiple of these countdown timer components. You can just duplicate it. You can place it wherever you want to. So if you're getting the Webflow clonable, you already have the component in here and it's fine. You can use it, but it's very likely that you already have a project and you want to paste the component into your project. So let's try how that works out. So I copy the component and then I open my own project. And in here, I just paste the component. What you'll see is this yellow warning saying that the component is now unlinked. That just means that it will still work exactly how it did on the other project, but it's no longer a component. So if I click here, you'll see that we just have the fields. Ideally, we want to create it as a component again, because that will make it easier for us to edit the ending time and the time zone mode. So let's turn it into a component so we can see how that works. So I'll just take the countdown wrapper here and I will create a component. We can give it a name and create. Inside of this component, you'll see a block for each of the days, hour, minutes, and seconds. These are fine. We don't need to change them. You can, of course, if you want to change the layout or the fonts or the styling. But what we really need to do is to create the component properties. So we click the component wrapper up here and we'll see the custom attributes. So we want to create a component property. The first one, the data year, that's where we'll define the year. So we create a component property. We just call this year and we create another one for month. We create another one for day and one for time, 24 hour format and another component property for time zone mode. Also writing a bit of help text so we don't have to remember how it actually works and what are the possible options. So that's actually all we need to set up for the component to work. Inside of the component, you will also see a code embed. This is where we have the code that actually makes it work. So you can take a look at how it works if you want to. I'm not gonna go too much into detail with it here. But one thing I will mention is that when the timer reaches zero, the code will send a custom event called countdown ended. We can use that to trigger some kind of action. And that's actually how we can make confetti when the countdown reaches zero. But now we just created the countdown timer and we have the component out here. We can set the ending time and date and that's all good. So let's just try to set something and then publish so we can see that it works in our own project as well. So now I just set specific date and time and publish the site. And as we can see, it's counting down in days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so now let's look at the confetti. How can we do that? So I'm gonna add another code embed up here. 
I'm going to paste and snip it in here. I'll make sure to include it in the clonable so you can also just copy it if you want to use it. Here I'm using a library, Canvas Confetti, and we are creating a function that will blast emoji confetti. So here are just the options that will define how the confetti will work. The interesting thing is what we see below here, an event listener that will trigger when we get the countdown ended event. When the countdown reaches zero, the code will run the function inside, which is the blast confetti function. So we'll see the confetti. Let's save that. One thing to keep in mind here when I'm creating this event listener is that I want the event listener to be created as soon as possible if I want it to work also after the timer has already reached zero. So that's why I'm actually putting it above the countdown timers. You could also put this in the head of the project, which would probably be a better idea. Now I'm just going to leave it in here. So let's set a timer that ends a bit sooner. So we should see some confetti real soon. Beautiful, there we have it. It's very nice confetti. And the timer has reached zero. And if I refresh the page, you will now see the confetti again. Okay, so that's actually how you can use this countdown timer component, put it into your own project and add some confetti to it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did something cool with it, make sure to let me know. I'd love to see it. And otherwise, just thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.